Hello everyone, uh, in this video we will be talking about limits involving infinity. So first we're going to discuss when we have a limit of plus or minus infinity, right? So thus far we've seen things like limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l, where this is some real number. But now we want to consider what it would mean to have the limit as x approaches c of f of x equal infinity or, you know, say minus infinity. So we say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is infinity if we can make f of x as big as we want by choosing x close enough to c. So what does this picture look like? So if we look at this, which is the graph of, say, 1 over x squared, right? So if we make an arbitrary threshold, we say we want f of x to be at least this big, then here, right, we would have the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals infinity. Basically, if we choose close enough, right, so like within these lines of zero, then we're going to be above that threshold. If we make the threshold higher, right, we have to go a little bit closer, but we're still going to be able to do it. That's the basic idea. And you can imagine the same thing for negative infinity, basically, uh, Again, you would choose x close enough to c to get as small as you want or as big negative as you want. All right, so now let's consider another example. So this one, we're going to look more at one-sided limits. So in this case, right, as we approach 0, uh, we're not going to be able to say that it's infinity or negative infinity in this case, right? Because if I want to say it passes this threshold, if I'm close enough to 0, well, I can pick things on the negative side that are really close to zero, and I'm really far away from that uh, threshold. But I can talk about the limits from either side, right? So in this case, the limit as x approaches zero from the left, well, if we're only tracking these values, we're going down to negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches zero from the right is positive infinity, these are not the same, and so in this case, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x simply does not exist. Okay, so this is different than 1 over x squared because those were both going to infinity, and thus the two-sided limit did as well. So one nice thing about uh, limits being infinity is that there's a nice connection with vertical asymptotes. Namely, it lets us actually give a nice definition of a vertical asymptote. So we say that f has a vertical asymptote at the vertical line x equals a if at least one of the one-sided limits is one of the infinities. So they could be both infinities, they could be different infinities, uh, only one needs to be though. So uh, just a quick example of one where you would maybe see it only from one side is, you know, if maybe you have a piecewise defined function where this is a, that goes to negative infinity, but then it's just like a straight line on this side with no vertical asymptote, seemingly. So this would still count because this part, the left-hand limit, is going to negative infinity. So now let's look at an example. So this is a rational function. We're going to check out the vertical asymptotes and see what the limits are that are going to infinity. So we're probably used to thinking of vertical asymptotes as when we have zero in the denominator, and you are kind of looking for that, but also non-zero in the numerator. We've seen zero over zero in the past just give us a whole, for instance. Uh, so we should first factor this, and this is x plus three times x minus two. So we're gonna go ahead and look at x equals negative three and x equals two, and the limits there. So. Let's first look at x approaches 2 from, say, the right. Remember, we only need one side. So if we have this, then when we look at the two things on the bottom, right, 2 but a little bit bigger than 2, these are both going to be positive. So this is basically something that's approaching 0, but it's a small positive number. And then your top is negative 3. And so negative 3 over something really tiny but positive, this limit will be negative infinity. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And then at x equals 3, I'm actually going to look at the right side again, but for kind of a different reason here, or sorry, negative 3. Uh, then we're going to have something that is, you know, roughly negative 8 on top over 
So negative three from the right is like negative 2.99 or something. This would be positive. This is definitely negative. So this would be a very small, close to zero negative number, negative over negative. This would actually be positive infinity as our limit. And again, this confirms that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. So for your first exercise, I'm gonna have you compute the limits, both the one-sided and then the two-sided limit at zero of cosecant x. So remember, cosecant is one over sine. And then my hint would be to think carefully about what it means to be coming from the left and from the right, because the x-axis and the unit circle may not match in terms of that process. So we just got done discussing limits uh, that end up at infinity. Here, we're going to take limits as our x value, not our y value approaches infinity. So we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is l if f of x can be made as close to L as you want by taking x big enough. So what do we mean by this? Well, I'm going to look again at 1 over x, but this time we're going to go not toward 0 and off to infinity, but toward infinity on the x-axis and toward 0. So the point here is you can make your as close as you want. You know, say we say this error bound, so we're in this window. And then we just look, okay, what is the threshold I have to pass? How big do I have to make x to get in there? So it seems like right around here, the second I cross this red line, I am as close to uh, zero as I want to be. And if I make my blue line closer, right, then my red line goes farther down. But the point is I can always do this. And then if you want to talk about the limit as x approaches minus infinity, it's defined very similarly, right? So is similar. In that case, you're just going to be going uh, to the left, so taking x small enough. So just like uh, limits going toward infinity or minus infinity gave us vertical asymptotes, as you just saw with 1 over x there, we were seeing a horizontal asymptote. And so we can define f having a horizontal asymptote, so I'll just call it an ha, at y equals b, a horizontal line, if either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is b or the limit as x approaches minus infinity of f of x is b. So something to keep in mind, you can have horizontal asymptotes at two different values. So say you have a graph that looks something like this, right? It's sort of an S-curve. So you can have two different horizontal asymptotes corresponding to your limit at infinity over here and your limit at minus infinity over here. So we're gonna look at this same example again. Uh, so x minus five over x squared plus x minus six. And I'm gonna give you the general strategy for how we're going to find asymp horizontal asymptotes for these uh, in rational functions in general. So first, I'd like to note that the limit as x approaches either infinity of one over x is gonna be zero. And in fact, we can even make this better and just take powers of x, and that's going to be zero, right? Because even if you're taking a power below one, um, then that's fine, right? You take the square root. Square root still goes off to infinity. And so basically, you're going to have one over something getting really, really big in absolute value. And so this is going to approach zero. Why is this useful? Well, what we're going to do is divide everything by the highest power in the denominator. So in this case, for f of x, that's going to be x squared. So when we look at this, we say, OK, what's my limit as I approach infinity of x minus 5 over x squared plus x minus 6? So I'm going to divide by x squared, so multiply by 1 over x squared on each. That's just one, so I'm not changing my limit, right? And this becomes one over x minus five over x squared over one plus one over x minus six over x squared. And then the point of this guy here that's starred is this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and this goes to zero, right? All of those are some constant over 
something getting really, really, really big. And so you simplify this down and suddenly we just have the limit as x approaches infinity of zero over one, and that's just zero. And so in this case, we kind of note it goes to zero. Well, the main reason is basically that this power in the denominator is higher than the highest power in the numerator. Um, and you can do similar things, again, by dividing by the highest power in the denominator to look at what happens if you have, you know, the higher power up top or if they're the same power. And this process will always work and end up giving you the limit. Okay, so for your second exercise, I want you to find this limit at infinity of this rational function. And then I want you to tell me what is a horizontal asymptote that this has from that answer. Okay, so use that division by the highest power in the denominator and then apply that to figure out where the horizontal asymptote is going to be. All right, thanks for watching.